Hey, everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo, um, back for more. And very excited to talk about a new film from uh, actress and filmmaker Amy Simons. She dies tomorrow. This could not be more relevant. Mm. <laughs> a lot of folks saw this movie before the world shut down. And it, I saw it afterward. And it has much stronger relevance, resonance, poignance now because of it. Um, I'm, I'm sure in retrospect, it might be kind of eerie for folks who, who saw it before it all happened. Um, so it stars Caitlin Scheel, and she plays a young woman who is convinced she's going to die tomorrow. All of a sudden, she has this idea in her head, and she's just shaken by it. Like she, nothing matters. And she walks around like, like a shell of herself and tries to explain to people, I have this feeling. I'm going to die tomorrow. I just know it. And everyone kind of blows her off like, oh, no, you're not. You're fine. You're just sad. Here, have a drink or whatever. You know, you'll, you'll be fine. But that seed of an idea, that seed of doubt about, you know, the safety of our existence, the permanence of it, um, gets into everybody else's head. And one by one, the friends she has confided in also realize, oh, I'm going to die tomorrow. Now, I'm going to die tomorrow too. And it's how this notion, it becomes a contagion. It spreads like a virus through a, all of A virus, people. if you will. <laughs> it is like a virus. And, um, and it's, it's really moody and surreal and darkly funny at times, like unexpectedly amusing. Here Pardon me, there. I have to get up and go let the dog in. So I so will be right back. Who, who let the dog in, Matt? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you? Did you? Okay, there he goes. Um, so, oh, there's, there's a sweet face. There he is. Aww. So um, I really liked this. And it's, it, what Amy Simons is trying to achieve here is so strange and so surreal and so singular and so hard to pull off tonally because it's a horror movie in some ways, but it's stealthy and the villain is amorphous. You know, how do you hide from this this idea that's creeping up on you and is it mental illness and is it depression? And is it sadness? Whatever it is, you can't put a label on it, but it feels real and it feels inescapable. And the power of suggestion of like just the existential dread, the way it sweeps through everybody feels really relevant to our times now. I think we're all experiencing that. And, and I think this would be an effective movie even if none of this had happened, you know, yeah. it becomes especially so now on a totally different level. Yeah, I think when we look back and we talk about movies that are we're capturing the zeitgeist of right now, we're totally going to be talking about this movie because it does sort of touch upon this sort of baseline level dread that that people are kind of dealing with in one way or another in their daily lives. And yeah, like it, it's almost like, I mean, it's a horror movie and it is almost this sort of weird contagion film in that this idea goes from person to person. And eventually you have people who aren't part of like the immediate circle of the characters that we've come to know who are also drawn into the same thing. And it's like, well, where did they get it? You know? Um, yeah. And, and, it, and then it just sort of brings up all these questions of like, well, how would you behave if you knew you were going to die tomorrow? How would you, what would you tell people? What would you try to get done? What would you admit to? And what would you want to experience? And what would you feel like you needed to share with others? Like, uh, yeah, th this, this film just kind of touches on so much stuff. And it, it, a thing that we, that comes up a lot when we ever talk about movies that have these sort of like odd premises is that like, you can either, you can explain it too much, which undercuts the whole thing. And you can explain it just enough to where you still want to know more and it's unsatisfying. But the less you explain it, which this one doesn't really try to give you any kind of root causes, the more you feel it and the more it seems plausible because your average person who is undergoing this thing isn't going to have the answers for that. They just know what they're feeling and what's happening to them. And this movie is about what you're feeling and what's happening and how it, how it, that, what that feels like. And it's, I, I'm, I saw this movie in the last 24 hours and I have not stopped thinking about it and I'm going to be thinking about it for some time to come. Uh, yeah, it is very much the movie of the moment, I think. Matt? Um, I like this. I don't know that I loved it. I mean, it's it's really good. It does what it does. I kind of wanted a little bit more. Like, I, a little bit... I feel like it, it... 
it, it straddles a line that I would have liked it to have come down on one side or the other a little in bit. In terms of what? Like you want to explain In terms more? Of, of kind of the, you know, the dread that's in it versus there's just some absurd things that come up. Um, you know, the, the scene with Josh Lucas uh, is just, I think that tone, it, I think it crosses the line of sometimes being almost into silliness. Um, Remind me again, I saw this a few weeks ago. He's, he's the, the doctor. doctor. He's oh, right. the doctor, right? Um, we have two Josh Lucas movies. We do. Week. Yes, Josh exactly. Um, but yeah, like, it, it, look, for the dread that it's doing, um, you know, I would have liked to have gotten maybe just a hair more info um but on the origin of it and like what it on, means or or the reality of it i see um like is but, everyone really gonna die tomorrow or do they just think they are yeah i was trying to say that without giving anything away um, i don't think you i don't think we did okay that's, uh, the question, that's the question i'm posing what's what's real right. and what's not right um I think in a way but, it doesn't matter because they still are going to go through that moment of feeling like they are. And that what that's, if they genuinely feel it and they be, they behave accordingly, what happens later is of less interest than what they do and what they think is their last day on earth. To you it's real. When you're experiencing it, it's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's all that matters. Mass yeah, I don't know. Cause I, I'm a, yeah, I don't know. Cause I'm a little bit, I'm actually a little bit more interested of like, what if it's your last day on earth and the way you act and then the next day it's like, I mean, uh, yeah, I woke up. I did what? <laughs> oh, right. Like, <laughs> well, it's interesting you, to me what... Do you, and so the question is like, do you go back to normal? Do you try or do you... I mean, I think right? that's, that's a way to tell that story and it certainly would be an interesting right. one, but I think... Maybe that, that's the, the sequel, right? She dies I, the day after tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. She, y'all, it turns out. No. <laughs> um, I, but I think that the way she is choosing to tell this story is equally compelling. And I think in a way, because we're in this thing that we don't know how it's going to end, it kind of makes it, I think, not having it like tied up in that way makes it more valuable for this moment and makes it more relatable for where we all are right now. And also the people in this movie can do what they want to do with what they believe are their remaining hours on earth, right? We can't. Right. They can have a party. They can, you know, have sex or they can go ride a dune buggy or whatever it is that they want to do. They can go be with people. We can't. We can we shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't. We mustn't. <laughs> but I, but I, I we don't could. Know. But I mean, this, this, is an, this is an existential horror film because like I, I just watched uh, The Wages of Fear again for a film and a movie and we were talking about the idea of like, you know, this is a movie about people who know that they could die at any minute and you can imagine that for the French, it's like, ah, oh, but so so do we all, you know? <laughs> and it's like, these, these are people who know their lives are going to end and we all know that. We all live our lives with the understanding that death exists but we we all sort of project it into this far off future that we don't have to sweat right now and so i think the notion that like no 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 clock's ticking changes things and it sort of raises this larger idea of like well all of our clocks are ticking it's just at a different speed and should that in any way color the choices we make and the decisions of like how we're going to spend our time and who we're going to have in our life and all that kind of stuff and yet there's nothing mawkish about the way that it presents that notion. no no not at all it doesn't become like you could die tomorrow go be the best version of yourself you can be tell people that you know that you you love them you know it, it never gets into any kind of like maudlin pat platitudes you know it's just like holy fuck <laughs> which is much more interesting and much more messy yeah, yeah well you know I, I think in a way this might be a good double feature with palm springs <laughs> oh yeah that's true yeah, and both the cast are kind of interesting young cast. Anyway, exactly. I'm saying 8.4. Uh, I said 8.8. I like this a lot. And I, I, I need to go back and see Simus's other stuff. Um, I've, I've seen a few episodes of, uh, of Girlfriend Experience, which she was the kind of driving force behind. But she's done some other features I need to get caught up. I think she's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I give it an 8. Her number is an 8.4.
Cool. So yeah, please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, follow us at Be Fast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and check out our, sorry, check out our uh, Patreon page at patreon.com slash Be Fast All Day. Uh, this week we are reviewing a film that our subscribers chose for us, and that would be The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring the late Olivia de Havilland. Uh, thank you all for watching. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.